five-ish fangirls, I love you. And I'm one of the five-ish. In fact, I'm the biggest one of the five-ish. I am the sixth Doctor Colin Baker, and I wish you all well. Have fun. The Tangents and Squeak continue all the way to episode number 75 of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. If either of you ever use my name again, I'll remove your organs in alphabetical order. Any questions? Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like we do every week by going to the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bovideo. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin. And this, this is, is Mitch in Kitchener, Ontario. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not used to all of us being here. I was so confused there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Anyway, and this is Rachel, not in Indianapolis at the moment, currently in South Bend. Hello. <laughs> We're all here. I got so excited and I was confused. Here, yes, we're all here. Maybe some of us are, are more Christmas out than I others. <laughs> <laughs> You do not know how many cookies I have had in the last four days. <laughs> it's Christmas. Come, uh, the sugar high is wearing off. But yes, we're all here. Yes, we're all here. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, my goodness. <laughs> all righty. Well, and with that. Let's jump right let's into jump news. Right in. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, once upon a time, we have some news from that. They have cast their Hades, and sadly, it is not James Woods. But tear. <laughs> but we've got that would have uh, that would have been too good. I know. Yes, <laughs> I think we've got a sufficient replacement though. Alan McBeal alum Greg Gehrman will indeed be playing Hades, the devilish dictator of the underworld. We're going to be meeting the Once Upon a Time version of Hades in the second half of the season, uh, said Adam Horowitz. To EW, he is both inspired by a myth and by the Disney movie version, as we like to do. We're trying to create our own Once Upon a Time spin. I can't wait for everyone to see what he does with the character. Garman is slated to make his debut right away in the mid-season premiere, which also marks the ABC fairy tale drama's landmark 100th episode, in which Emma, her friends, and family try to rescue Hook, Colin O'Donoghue from the underworld. He absolutely has a surprising connection to one of our cast, executive producer Edward Kinsis uh. says. So Horowitz is quick to add, before everyone runs to Twitter to give their opinions on it, he's not related to anyone, <laughs> but there is a connection. Because hey, you know that's where we all go. If, if it's Rumpel, no, I think it might throw he's something. Not related to anybody. Yeah. But if the connection is Rumpel, it wouldn't surprise me, but I'll kind of roll my eyes just yeah. because. Yeah. 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 I, didn't, I didn't read down the whole article. I'm just like, if there's another branch of the family tree, I'm not going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's like, guys, yes, you done with it and and i i i, I do like I that they're seeing up front that it's not another branch of the family tree yeah, yeah. I, I i think i think they know what everybody's thinking mm-hmm. but i mean it's kind of like um in season four when when hook had the connection to ursula and it was just that that he mm-hmm. you know helped steal her voice and her singing yeah. voice and yeah. that's that that might be something like this but they, they could pull yeah. a a space balls and he's someone's Father's, uncle's, brother, sister, cousin's, second cousin's dog walker. <laughs> and what does that make us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> we well, fight. And with the theme for the episode, I was thinking, are we going to need a bigger flow chart? Yeah, really. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, you've seen those flow charts. Holy cow. Yes. I no, I was, I was explaining, this was months ago, I was explaining Once Upon a Time to my fiancé, and, and, and like, we we're, we're, we're starting, we wanted to watch it, I, I, he got me the other two season, DVD seasons that I did not have for Christmas, so I was like, yes, so I'm like, we're gonna watch this, and, and he's all for it, because we're gonna cosplay as, as Hook and Emma, um, oh, cool. at Comic-Con in March, anyway, um, so I was explaining him, I, I, I was explaining Hook's storyline, because he's like, he was curious and wanted to know, and I was like, yeah, he ran off with Rumpelstiltskin's wife, who, you know, and Rumpelstiltskin is is Neil's dad, who Emma and Neil hooked up, and they have Henry, so... Rumpel is Henry's grandfather, <laughs> father, on his father's and, side. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, 
okay. I mean, he just went with it. It was hilarious. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this sounds so weird if you don't know what it yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> Like Rumpelstiltskin is the new author's grandfather, and, and Henry's great grandfather is Peter Pan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the other one I was explaining. <laughs> he, he, he specifically yeah. told me he didn't want to know anything about season four because he wanted to watch the Frozen storyline without spoilers. But anything else, he's like, "That's fine." Yeah, you know that he was okay with being spoiled on. I was explaining to him why I didn't like the Neverland story arc. And I told him that the Peter Pan thing, and he was just like, okay, yeah, that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yes, someone else gets it. Yeah. Yeah. But no James Woods. No James yeah. Woods. But Hades, Hades, this Hades should be interesting. Though. Yes, it, it mm-hmm. should I'm be. Like, so. so. And Although, I finally, yeah. I finally listened to to the episode where you guys were talking once upon a time in the finale, and every time I wish I'd been there for that discussion because I have all these things and I'm like, and this happened, and I understand this part, and I can explain this. And then, <laughs> That's okay. yeah, and then we're all like, James Woods needs to be Hades. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Although, although Greg does kind of look like James Woods, so... Mm-hmm. We'll, I'll have to look we'll this have, guy up, because I don't even know who he is. You'll have to... Uh, I don't know if the, they've changed it since then, but I... Because I couldn't put the face with the name. Oh, he kind of so does. So okay. I got I got an, M, an IMDB, and it shows his listing for Once Upon a Time, but he has him listed as Distinguished Gentleman <laughs> as the character name <laughs> on oh, IMDB. Okay, well, that's... Well, they've been like him from Alan McBeal. Yeah. <laughs> Souls of the Departed is the episode that he's well, probably the first episode he's going to be in, which would make sense. But yeah, he kind of he kind of looks like a younger James Wood, so this yeah. this works. Yep, mm-hmm. he does. Yep. Now, does he sound? I wonder. I don't know how he sounds. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Look ever, ever, like, yeah. Ever since we did that once upon a time, though, when we were talking about James Woods, and all, every time I say James Woods' name, all I can think of is that episode of Family Guy where they do the the parody of uh, "You Two" from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It's ah, you've got James Woods. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to share that so y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> James Woods. Anyway. <laughs> Enough about James Woods. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. On with the news. Yes, moving on uh, to uh, Harry Potter news, which we're always excited to get. <laughs> um, really, this is news that shouldn't be news, but it's become news, and therefore we're going to discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is it, some people probably, I don't think we've really discussed it on the show, but there's going to be a, uh, West End, uh, production or show that is in the Harry Potter world that's almost essentially a sequel is ask to, uh, the Harry Potter books slash movies, um, with, um, Harry Potter, older Harry Potter, Harry Potter more our age, I guess. Or slightly older. Yeah, well, it's like it, it, it takes place after the epilogue, so you know they're married and they have kids, yes. and their kids are going to Hogwarts, and so it's so that that's what it is. Yeah, so, I mean, this is news in as much as hey, here's the here's the cast. So, yeah, you know, don't don't say that this isn't news. Right. Um, like you know, the, the 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 older trio has been cast. Yes. Yeah. The, Although I, when I first saw the picture, I, I had a hard time figuring out okay, who's Ron and who's Harry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like put the scar on his forehead that way yeah, we can tell I can him figure apart. out which one Hermione is because that's his process of elimination yeah but. a little bit <laughs> just a bit yeah just a smidge um but they they like Chrissy said they've they've cast our, our older Harry Ron and Hermione and the reason that this is news or is making headlines is because the woman that has been cast to play Hermione is black which for <laughs> Most of us were like, oh, okay, whatever. I, you know, I honestly, <laughs> let, me, let me say this. Can I, I, I will say this, because yeah. I actually did write about this for my job, because I do, like, political social commentary, and there were people who were all, like, making a big deal, like, oh, my gosh, Hermione's black, this is wonderful, and this is great. And, okay, 
I have to explain this. I have to explain myself carefully mm -hmm. with this because it could be misconstrued. I have zero problem with Hermione being cast as a black woman. I don't know anything about this actress. Her name is Noma. Uh, her last name is something I'm going to slaughter because I can't. Noma Doom Doomzawini. Yeah, because she's like Swahili yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 I I know nothing about her. Not having any knowledge of of, of British theater. Uh, I think a lot of people were, were kind of trying to head off at the pass, that, assuming that people were going to be upset that, that she's a black woman. And I'm just kind of like, I, and I haven't seen it. I have not seen people complain. I don't doubt that that's out there, but it's probably in a corner of the internet that I do not frequent. And I'm just kind of like, okay, until there is a problem mm -hmm. with people having a problem with this and it's widespread, don't make that big a deal out of it. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes back to... Uh, when Star Wars, when, when the trailers and things were, were coming out and people were, there was this, there was this fake boycott Star Wars thing. And it was like making it look like there were a bunch of racist people saying, oh, we can't watch Star Wars because there's a black person in it. But it, but these Twitter accounts were obviously fake and it turned an idiot trying to make, <clears throat> trying to get attention. The only reason the hashtag trended was because people were using it to fight against these supposed bigots, racists, whatever, and that's why it trended. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of, and people were like, oh, there's really, there really are these hordes of racist people. I'm like, no, it, it, it turned out there really weren't. Like, this was actually documented that, that that wasn't the case. So I'm just kind of like, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, let's be excited that there's this, this, this sequel that J.K. Rowling is involved in and she's, give, you know, she's written it and she's given her blessing, but let's not make a big you know a bigger deal out of this night you know i'm i'm glad they have their cast and i think they're gonna do i think they're gonna do wonderful and i actually hope it does well enough and this is good this is a pipe dream as far as i can tell but i i hope it does well enough that it actually comes across the pond and we get a tour of it out here yeah that would be nice or, cast or, at least, or, a different. or at least the, the script in book format for those of us who can't make it over the pond so at least yeah. sit and read or and enjoy even, like a DVD release or stream it on Netflix. I don't know. However, they want to do it. I mm -hmm. don't need it. Like a lot of theaters do that. Like, like I know uh, Regal's um, does that. Like they was um, show. Um, yeah, they'll, they'll show uh, like Shakespeare productions and stuff. I, I I tried to go see it, but I just couldn't fit it in my schedule. But they were doing um, the one artsy fartsy type movie theater near me that shows like the independent movies, independently made movies, that mm -hmm. they were going to do a one-time uh, screening of, uh, was it, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch in... Oh, the... Oh, wait. One, whatever Shakespeare that he was doing recently. Richard <laughs> I, I thought it was... No, David Tennant was doing Richard the Third. At one point, I think, and then Benedict, I think, was doing well, cause they both, a Hamlet they or both, something else. Both Benedict and uh, Martin Freeman, because I remember them saying something like they were both. Yeah. So, but yeah, this could easily be something like one of those like Fathom type events where they yeah they show Cirque du Soleil and Shakespeare productions and all say. that. Yeah. So. Because you know that yeah the. There's plenty of Harry Potter fans on this side of the pond that will take yeah. whatever we can get <laughs> as far as new content. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'd totally be okay with that. Yeah. Let's do it. Give, give us, give us more, give us new stuff, and let's not yeah. just retread old things. Right. So. Kind of, I don't know. Yeah. But it's um, it's it, if you find yourself going across the pond though, um. It's going to start doing previews June 7th of 2016, and then um, opening day is July 30th at West End's Palace Theater. So, yep. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I think something starts like four days after my birthday, and I won't even, most likely won't get to go see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll know, you'll know that it's happening. Yes. Yes. And once it starts happening, hopefully there will be such a demand for it that we will get something over here. In the U.S. and Canada, hopefully, make it happen. Mm -hmm. J.K. won't. J.K. won't leave us hanging. 
But wait, the, since the world premiere, doesn't that usually be in its but that's usual I don't know. No, not Well they they use they use world to make it sound Oh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you know, you know, you have the word, the, the term World Series. And... Good point. <laughs> it's American baseball. Yeah. yeah. But well, we do have, we do have the, you know, the baseball league does have the Toronto Blue Jays, so we are somewhat multinational, I guess. <laughs> right? That is true. <laughs> Two countries, therefore, it's the world. Well. <laughs> Two out of the same continent are now the world. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know. This, this, the name's been around for over I a know. century. I, I don't make it. I like, know. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking, anyway. of, speaking of global. <laughs> yes, oh yeah, speaking of global. So there's this little movie that's been out for like, what, 12 days? Yes. <laughs> 11, technically. 11, something like that. And, and it's, here, at least uh, here in the U.S. Star, Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Never heard of it. Has, yeah, I haven't heard of it. You know, yeah, it's I, not, I, some little independent, artsy farty movie that I don't know. But, uh, but no, it is, it is, it is accumulated over a hundred. Well, no, it has hit as of today a hundred billion. No, wait, one billion dollars. Not a hundred billion. That would that be would, impressive. That would be insane. Okay, one billion dollars in ticket sales globally. And I hasten to point out because. Because my fiance and I were talking about this earlier today, we were talking about this article. Um, that that is without the movie having been released in China yet, because uh, they they don't get it until January, because they have to do translations and, and, and dubbing and, and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what Chinese Star Wars fans. Yeah, and so so China has like one sixth the population of the entire planet, mm -hmm. and you know when, once they once their movie going round is up it'll it will have made a lot more money yeah and mm -hmm. it will probably yeah. well, in, in the words, looking, in at the words list, of, looking at a list of the highest grossing film it's at number 15 right now and that that's you know and it, it's going to be in the end for 90 million dollars worldwide gross and and we were talking about this earlier, and and, and my fiance is so adorable. <laughs> he was like, "I wonder if it'll make it. I wonder if it'll it'll overtake Avatar and the the boat movie." <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't think of Titanic. <laughs> he knew which one he was talking about. It just wasn't coming. So I had to share that story because I because it made me giggle. <laughs> the boat movie. <laughs> the boat. The boat one. <laughs> so I'm like, yes, it could. It, it could. It could possibly overtake the boat. It could. could. I think it might. Yeah, I think so, too. At the rate it is going. And I am more than happy to say that I have contributed to that ticket sales. I just literally saw it again today. So. Yeah, I, I well, thought... I thought dad ordered our tickets first to see it showing tomorrow. Five tickets for yeah. someone. So we're, we're helping. We're helping. Yeah. We're more than happy yeah. to help. I've seen it More than happy to have. time to see a yeah. third one sometime in the new year. Yeah. So there you go. It's it's not leaving the theaters anytime soon, I'm, and people I'm are going multiple times. Time time sometime in the new year with my friend. Yeah. So all so all you all you spoil sports and and parade rainers out there who are writing about Star Wars isn't as good as you think it is. Suck it. <laughs> Take your take your negative opinion and feed it to the Minox. Yeah. <laughs> and our, we have a bit of housekeeping. Um, the voting is open for January's book club choices over at the Traveling the Vortex book club group page over at Goodreads. And vote, please. And there are pictures, so you know which book you're voting for. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, so we know what those books actually are? 
Uh, just a second. <laughs> like, Holy I knew there was something else. <laughs> there, there's a tab. Just a second. Tab is scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. We have the um, Doctor Who Legends of a Shoulder by Justin Richards as one of our choices. Uh, Royal Blood by Una McCormack, which is a 12th Doctor uh, book. And then we have Big Bang Generation by Gary Russell, also a 12th Doctor story. And Deep Time by Trevor Baxendale, also a 12th Doctor book. Are those, those are the Glamour Chronicles, right? Yes. Okay, because I got... I just got Big Bang Generation for, for Christmas. and I've I, read two Well, let's see. The... I got um, Chapters gift cards for Christmas, so I should be able to buy whichever one, whichever book it ends up being. Well, as of right now, a shoulder is leading three, two, one with Royal Blood. I probably will not be able to partake in this month's book club because I'm getting married at the beginning of February and I got things to do. <laughs> I'm exactly hoping after the wedding by full January. calm down enough and I can I can read again. Oh. I can't remember the last time I was able to read for the book club. I feel bad. Ugh. It's all about just time. Yep. Yeah, and you can still vote. You can still vote. Yeah, <laughs> we will vote. Yeah, well, is, I'm like it hopes it will. I'm okay. left for sure. behind. <laughs> yeah. I just I just finished Schizoid Earth, so I could listen to the Traveling the Vortex, um, re- proper review. Yeah. <laughs> which I haven't actually listened to because it, Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, life. Life overtakes us all. Yeah. Mm. I was actually having a conversation with my friend. I got into Minecraft yesterday, and I was talking to my friend about like how I was hungry in real life. I was like, what's real life? Like, it's very scary. <laughs> <laughs> there is truth to that. There is truth to that statement. So, I'm just looking at the poll, and it looks like the titles are big enough that you should be able to tell what they are, like mm. what, which one is what. Yeah. yeah. On the cover, so yeah. 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 Sometimes it's, it could be funny. They 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 keep changing up their layouts and, and the mm-hmm. way they do things and so sometimes it mm. doesn't look as good as you wish it could but <laughs> yeah, whatever <laughs> oh well uh, the last poll was the September book because <laughs> mm-hmm. all those Lethbridge Stewart ones Stewart yeah mm-hmm. so. back to doing polls yay Yep. Yay. <laughs> polls are good Yep. All right then. Well, I think I'm going to add to the Shielder's lead. Not a problem. Go <laughs> at it. All right. Oh, there's a two way tie with Big Bang. There's a two way with Big Bang Generation and Royal. Is that Royal Blood? Yep. They got a vote apiece. Cool. Uh, hopefully no votes not. for deep time not yet <laughs> anyway shall we hey. move on to our other bit of housekeeping Brittany sure um, well this month this year is almost over so new photo challenge for January 2006 which just basically me being lazy I'm sorry did you say 2006 <laughs> 2016 we're not going backwards <laughs> Um, I keep are we going back in time 10 years? <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? No. <laughs> I was still in high school, so yeah, I don't want to go back to it. <laughs> um, anyway, for January 2016, it's going to be 2015 in pictures, which is basically the same thing I did at the beginning of last year with 2014 in pictures. 
I just changed the order of some of them. <laughs> and so you know I, what? You, you have you had a different year in 2015. So you know, true. take this time to document it. Mm -hmm. The good, the bad, the ugly, the whatever, the I don't know stuff. Yeah, <laughs> the things that happened. Exactly. That thing. That thing that happened. We all exactly. Or don't want to. I don't know. Yeah. So it sounds like fun. Yep. Yeah. Very much so. We will start that January first, which is not that far away, actually. Nope. That is, <laughs> nope. That is what Friday. Friday, as we're recording this. So. <coughs> That's Holy crazy. cow! Mm -hmm. That's my grandma's birthday too. As, as of as of Friday. I will be able to say, I'm getting married this year, which is just weird beyond. <laughs> Some days I'm like, is this actually a thing that's happening? Yep. <laughs> yep. yep. It, it's going down. Yep. Ooh, anyway. Pardon me. Alrighty then. Well, that's it for news. So we'll move on. To this week's topic, which is Doctor Who, because we haven't talked to in a while, actually. We really haven't, which is kind of strange for us. Although it's just kind of the way the it's, it's, the, it's the, the with all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's the way Doctor Who was scheduled this year with it, with the the finales and everything being so close to Christmas. So it's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it, it started later this year than it did last year, so uh, that that made yeah, it. Yeah, like a month later. Yeah, I know. <laughs> everything started later this year, so then everything was bunched up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of a pain. A little bit. It seems like the winter is starting over. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, yeah, but now, now we can all... Yeah, when, the, the, when Series 9, Series 9 ended, we were like, oh, it's over. But then, you know, we had the Christmas special. But now that we've had the Christmas special as well, that the season is officially done and we'll be back on um, Easter Saturday, as I'm sure, according to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> we only have to wait till yeah. Easter Saturday for it to come back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can always hope. <laughs> Right. Um, uh, but um uh, so yeah, we, we, we discussed um the magician's apprentice and the witch is familiar obviously already. Um the it's funny because the series nine proper had this ongoing uh, story arc how Stephen Moffat likes to do. Um, of what was going to happen to Clara just because we knew from the outside that Jenna Coleman was leaving after the end of the season. So we knew that Clara had to leave somehow. Um, and then the Christmas special really is standalone. It if, really is. From series nine. It doesn't stand alone from the series as a whole if you're talking I New Who. Yeah. But it's definitely independent of Series 9, so they're almost well, two separate discussions. There's a little bit of context from C from Series 9. Yes. You know, going in, it helps, but it's not it's not necessary. It's not no. strictly necessary. Like, Christmas is, this Christmas special is very disconnected from Series 9, although there is a little bit of a running theme going through there, but not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really, a lot of Series 9 was, uh, you, you had a, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I always had in my head every week that it's like, you know, I, I think we all probably assumed that Clara was going to leave at the very end of the season, which technically she did, but then she didn't, but then she did. Yeah. <laughs> but there was this, this running theme almost every week of the doctor being overly concerned about Clara's wolf. Not that he's never 
concerned about his companion's welfare, but it, it reminded me a bit of um, David's first season with the whole, you know, there's a storm coming and Rose is all like, nothing's ever going to tear us apart and that sort of thing. And, you know, this season the doctor is all like, Clara's going to die. I don't want you to die. And Clara's like, oh, I'm fine. And it, it to me, it, it reminded me of that season um, with, with Ten and Rose um, a little bit. So, but then every week it's like, you know, they get into a, 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 an issue and Clara's life is fret, threatened, but then they figure it out. So it's like, oh, you know, they're the whole doing the dangling. Oh, Clara's going to die, but then she doesn't. So by the time, yeah. by the time like we every, get to every, every week, you're like, cause you know, she's leaving, but not sure when. And it's like, oh, is it going to happen this week? And it doesn't. You're like, oh, phew, we're good till next week. Yeah. Oh, crap. What? So, yeah. But by the time we get to face the raven, we're all like, you know, blood pressure is at a, at its peak. And then she does die, and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers, by the way. Spo yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm also sure, doing... I'm pretty sure we're okay. I'm also doing air quotes here when I say Clara dies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? For, for, for Stephen Moffat's reputation of, of killing off characters, they don't really die in the traditional sense. No. No. Nobody, no, but no, no companion has really, truly, like, died except for Adric. <laughs> like, a long-running companion just yeah. totally kicked the bucket. You have to go all the way back to five with Adric to get a real solid death. <laughs> Yeah, because we, we watched Face the Raven, and, and, and Jared asked me, because after that episode, you know, it looks like Clara is dead, he asked me, has, has any, has, you know, has any companion, like, died? I'm like, well, there was Adric, and I was trying to think, of like, there's got to be somebody else, and I guess Perry, but there's some muddling of the waters but there, mm -hmm. but not yeah. really, yeah, and it's just like, you've got, from what I hear, the expanding universe has got her with like five or six different timelines. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Big Finish has done all kinds of <laughs> really fun stuff with her timeline, but there's real there, there's no way to really pinpoint what what it what the story actually is with mm -hmm. her. So it's kind of like no, not not really, not since Adric. And then we find out you know a few weeks later that she died. She's dead, but not really and there's something going on there and it's like uh yeah <laughs> hard to explain yeah welcome to dr yeah. who everyone yeah really <laughs> we'll see everything's hard to explain dr yeah, who really. <laughs> just wait till we get to the christmas special <laughs> oh boy <laughs> although i love this christmas special. oh I yeah know, I, I, did I don't know about anybody yeah. else but oh We'll, anyway. we'll we'll get to that though, but no, right. we, no, we we, we need like, did, did yeah. you in a bit times because we were because I was on my way home from family Christmas and I watched it in the car, but I got to the part where the ship is about to crash into Drillium and then we had to go in and then we got home and then I never actually finished watching rewatching it, <laughs> but I have wa watched it all the way through twice. So two and uh, three two quarters. And, a, and like three two thirds. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's more than a half. I've only watched it once, but uh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I've only but yeah, there it. is, there is definitely, there's it. And maybe it's just because I'm fresh off of Star Wars. I just feel like there's definite rewatch mm -hmm. use potential for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With it, I'm like I could rewatch this over and over and over again and not get sick of it. Yeah. This season, as a whole, was quite strong. I mean, there's a there's yeah. there's a few that are like, eh, but don't get me. One, yeah. The only one I really well, okay, I guess there were two I kind of <laughs> had a problem with, but for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, but um, the sleep one. Sleep no I more. Get over the fact that that it was eye boogers that were the monsters. <laughs> I, I I stand I, I stand by my. My argument that Sleep No More is so whacked out weird because Mark Gatiss got sick of waiting for Sherlock to come back and started experimenting with drugs. Yeah, I, I can believe that. that. I will accept that argument. 
I can believe that. That's 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 my argument, and I'm sticking to it. This is what happens when Moffat leaves you answer. waiting for Sherlock to come back. Did you see the meme floating around after Star Wars: The Force Awakens got released? Star Star Wars has a new movie release. Still waiting for Sherlock, Sherlock season, season four. four. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, see, you know. St Stephen Moffat can keep, you know, I'll, I'll wait for Sherlock patiently, but obviously <laughs> others are not and are getting a little restless, and this is the result of it. And then what happens? Yep. <laughs> Especially when one of them is getting restless as one of your co-writers and partners and friends. And one, and one of your stars as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I think I think traveling the vortex mentioned this when they when they discussed that episode and it's like you know Mark Gatiss's writing on Sherlock is consistently really really good his Doctor Who it's hit and miss it is yeah like, like you can't ever look at a, a Mark Gatiss episode and be like oh Mark Gatiss is writing this he does good stuff it's kind of like which one are we gonna get yeah mm -hmm. are we gonna get you know Unquiet Dead Crimson Horror Mark Gatiss or are we gonna get Victory of the Daleks Sleep No More Mark Gatiss. Mm -hmm. Or Robot of Sherwood, Mark Gatiss. Well, I liked Robot of Sherwood. I Sherwood, did too. So, That's yeah. the thing. So, I, and that one, that one is one people are torn on. Like, you either like it or you don't. Or yeah. You don't care. Yeah. I happen to like it. So, he's, so even that is sort of is not. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so. If if we if if we get the sequel though. We can reserve a little bit of judgment if Mark right. gets I mean, his sequel I, that I, I he wants. I feel better knowing that that one was supposed to have been a two-parter and there was more to it. But it's like that 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 found footage thing was just like it was so bizarre. Like I don't feel like they, he used it very much. Yeah. Um, I just it, it was like sometimes I remembered. Oh yeah, this is supposed to be a found footage episode. Uh, throw this you know thing in there and, and do it. And it's like, eh. Yeah. Whatever. It's a little bit. So. <laughs> um, let's let's uh, we'll we'll jump around a little here. We'll we'll as far as episodes, just because they're some are tied together more than others. Um, mm -hmm. So let's let's uh, talk s stronger episodes with the Zygon two parter. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that was <laughs> perfect. Like I don't know how you get. I don't know. I, how do you get a better story than that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we've had good stories, mm -hmm. and and you know, and even even in this season later, there wasn't one that was even better. But we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, man, that Zygon two parter that is just about as good as you can get. Maybe it's something with the Zygons, because I mean, we've only had the Zygons in this and the fiftieth anniversary, and the fiftieth anniversary pair is of the Zygons. Was was well. I mean, in, in in New Who. Oh, in New Who. Well, in, yeah, okay. yeah. In New Who, we, this is all the Zygon we got, and all the Zygon episodes are really strong. So maybe it has something to do with the Zygon. Well, the fiftieth anniversary is like that's the fiftieth anniversary. They screw that one up there. Well, yes, Big that's true. But I mean, with with the Zygon two parter, um, <laughs> Invasion wasn't written by Stephen Moffat. It was. And he's it's got he's got co-writing credit on the Zygon Inversion, so we can't even give Stephen Moffat all the praise as far as the writing is concerned. Well, with. and the funny thing is, it was Peter Harness who wrote that, right? Yeah, Harness. I don't know how to say his name. Yeah. He's the one who did Kill the Moon, and Kill the Moon's awful, mm -hmm. just <laughs> so terrible, just on on so many levels. Sorry. And so when I saw he was writing this, one, I was just like, oh, what's this gonna be? And then I saw it, and I'm like. Okay, dude can write. Kind of like that's, it's kind of like Margatus. Yeah, apparently, and but his 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 quality of work swings way way further than that. Well, yeah. And maybe I don't know. Maybe it's the maybe. Well, I was gonna say maybe it's the quality of acting. But it's like no, it kind of had the same sort of. I mean, it's the same doctor and same companion. But maybe he learned. I I'm I'm willing I'm willing to give him that. Mm -hmm. that he learned from yeah. his mistake. Yeah, it, 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 you could you could probably make an argument, and some people have, um, that 
because uh, we we do have a lot of uh, repeat writers you know because we have Mark Gatiss who did one last season we've got Peter Harness who did one last season um, but a lot of people think that um, that this season was just a lot stronger because um, Peter Capaldi found his footing as yep. as the doctor. I, did. I you know yeah yeah I can I can definitely see that because. You know, being a new doctor, you can take take some time and, you know, figure out what you're doing. And mm-hmm. and plus, there was all the hype last year around, oh, there's a new doctor, and we just came off the 50th and all these things. This year, we really didn't have that. We had the doctor and Clara go on adventures, so it's not like we had to establish anything new. It's just like, oh, it's business as usual. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, we knew Clara was leaving, but we still... But that was, you know, we, they deal with that in, in its in its time. When it started, it's like, okay, we're we're starting, and we're we don't have all this hype and stuff surrounding it. So it kind of feels like that lets the writers not have to shoehorn so much stuff in there. I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So, but I mean, I I don't know if just just because I'm in the mindset of pretty much any who is good who. Even though, oh, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not blind to it. I will fully admit when I'm like, yeah, that wasn't as good as I, as it could have been. So I'm not like, ah, oh, to every single solitary episode, but, um, uh, I don't know if I can personally say my opinion is this season was better than last season as far as Capaldi's doctor, just cause I've thoroughly enjoyed Capaldi's doctor since he started, since he said he got new kidneys. <laughs> so. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm much the same way. Yeah. So, and I, yeah. You know, I don't. I don't want to say that I have trouble criticizing it, but at the same time, I don't know if I'm. I hate the idea of being overly critical because if I'm entertained, then I don't really have an issue. Yeah, I'm the same way. I mean, I know people get really, like, involved in the whys and the wherefores and how everything works, but mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like, eh, it, it, it works for me. Mm-hmm. I am not, I, I'm, yeah. I'm okay with it. Yeah. But that being said, the Zygon two-parter. Very, very good. Very, very good. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it almost, did, he almost didn't need to have that big bomb, well, not, I don't want to call it bombastic, but that great big show-stopping speech at the end of the story. But, oh, my gosh, like, that just, that was like the cherry on top of the whipped cream, on top of the nuts, on top of the mint chocolate chip ice cream <laughs> with chocolate strawberry topping. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it, I think it's kind of become a thing now that the do- a, a doctor will have at least one sort of, very quotable speech yeah. in his which, in his uh, repertoire. <laughs> which now all the doctors going to to conventions, conventions. will have we'll to read them. <laughs> and they're sort of like, all right. Well. I, I think I think I have, uh, the only one I know of is Paul McGann has done the the Zygon speech. Have any of the others that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of, but you know the the, the Pandorica. Yeah, the Pandorica one gets gets passed around a lot. Made, made the rounds. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> Gives people oh. something to post on YouTube, I guess. Yep. Here it is, a different doctor, a doctor reading so a different doctor script. <laughs> what do you think? Which is, which is interesting. It, it has its moments. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, yeah. it's different. Yep. Very much so. Um, and one of the really awesome things with the, the Zygon two-parter is that, uh, Osgood is alive. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. We have two yes. Osgoods, actually. Yes, and we don't know which one, yeah. And she called, you know, on the gravestone of the one that died, it just says, my sister. Yep. Which I think is really interesting because we didn't, like when Osgood has shown up before, we didn't really get a whole big, um, but like a real in-depth delving into her character. Right. So now to see her as, you know, she's she's fully accepted the Zygon, um, her, her role in the Zygon um, 
project, whatever yeah. it's called, I can't think of it. And you know, so she is so she is basically she is the keeper of the Zygons and that's what she does and mm-hmm. that's and so she's she's sort of their liaison and that is very cool. Yeah. And it's always fun when Unit gets involved and we get Kate Stewart. Oh yes. That's always a, a plus as well. So yeah. And Kate held her own. <laughs> oh, yeah. this time so, I know the guys complain about that that when they bring unit in and they seem to like dumb unit down they're, 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 they're bumbling through it all yeah they're bumbling through it all and I, they might to a point but and Kate's no idiot she's just, yeah. she's just she doesn't have the years of experience that the doctor does that's all yeah, yeah and the brigadier he had his uh he, I mean, he wasn't always, I don't want to say this, wasn't always put in the most flattering positions either when he was. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Y- unit is only is as good as the situation allows him to be, I guess. <laughs> yeah, something like that. With the resources they have available to them and the information available to them. Because sometimes yeah. they really literally are in the dark. I mean, we saw that in um, The Magician's Apprentice with the planes yeah. stuck in the air. And they were complete. They were completely lost. They had no idea. I mean, even Clara was giving them ideas that they'd never thought of. So, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. So. Especially, consider- while, but- especially considering that this isn't even... Well, I guess it is... It's not all of unit, yet it's kind of all of unit because Kate is not like the head of unit per se. She's the scientific person. Here she's in charge of the science division, technically, isn't she? Yeah. Of unit. Yeah, science. Science lead. Yeah, because that's what she introduces herself as in in Day of the Doctor is you know when she's apologizing for picking up the TARDIS. With the helicopter, yeah. with the doctor is still in it. <laughs> so, um, anyway, um, I guess we should maybe touch on the elephant in the room that is a shielder. <laughs> as much as we yeah, probably don't want yeah, to. We can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is my thing about a shielder. I know I've. <laughs> I've written into to, to traveling the vortex and kind of explained my 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 position on her and you know I get people like her and they they like the whole. Uh, this is my thing. I was introduced to a character in the girl who died. I was introduced to 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 a girl who you know is very, you know she's she's of her time, but she's very she's very tough. She's very smart. She's very loving, and she, you know, she she cares about her family. She she has all these things, and she's very she's fun. She's a fun character. I'm like, okay, she's gonna come back and do all these cool things, and then she dies, and then in the course of the story, you know, we we get that that wonderful flashback to Fires of Pompeii. Mm-hmm. I love Fires of Pompeii. It is one of my favorite New Who episodes. Like if you ask me to rank them, I can't put a number on it right now, but it is in my top ten. And, and I just love it. And I and since Peter Capaldi was cast, we were promised, okay, you know, there's going to be an explanation of why he has the face that he has, and it's going to be, you know, this, this big build-up. I'm like, okay, this is great. This is awesome. They're going to, you know, be kind of meta about this. I am totally cool with this. This is going to be fun. And, you know, Fires of Pompeii has that amazing emotional hook of – if you can't, you can't save everybody, but just save someone. And it's, you know, Donna just pleading with the doctor, just that wonderful acting job from Catherine Tate. It's just beautiful. One of my favorite episodes. So I'm like, okay, we're going to get this. And it's in this episode. So the doctor comes in and is like, I can save her. I can save this girl. And this is how I'm going to do it. And he does it and gives her, you know, immortality and, or whatever. And he's very, you know, he's remembered why he has this, the face that he has. Mm-hmm. So then that, that episode ends. And then the next, we get the next episode, The Woman Who Died. and Or The Woman Who Lived. Mm-hmm. And it's Shielder. 
she is like she's bitter she's bitter and it's <laughs> she like is she, bitter. She, but, but she also has this 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 air of smugness and i know a lot of people use that word to describe river song but, but i don't feel she river is song smug no yeah I don't feel she's earned it. I don't feel that I, as a viewer, as a, as an audience member, have has. I don't think she's. I don't feel like she's earned my sympathy. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand, like you know what you know you know the, the, the villagers kind of. I'm like, what what are these villagers doing here? And you know why I, you know I didn't. I don't want to necessarily follow her through all of her, her adventures. I just want some reason to. Yes, I know she's been through a lot, but so is the doctor, and so is River Song, and so is Jack Harkness. And I feel like, like, and I use those examples because those are long, you know, long-lived characters, and especially Jack Harkness. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's been through a lot, and we've seen that. We've seen the toll is taking on him. Even before we saw what happened with Torchwood and everything, you know, when he came back in in the end of season three, and you know, he's. You know, telling the doctor, oh, I'm immortal now, and I've been waiting for you, and and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, I get him. I understand why he, you know, he, you know, he's, he's still Jack, but there's also this layer of, of grief with him. I did not get that with the shielder. And the the season just kept asking me, you you know, you feel sorry for her. Now she's this, and she's more antagonistic. And I'm like, I don't get why, and I don't care. Like, if you brought back... You know, say you brought back Jack, and and he was bitter and whatever. Okay, I can understand that it would be weird, uh, and I'm just using that as an example. It wouldn't necessarily have to be Jack, but it's just like I never got that connection with the new version of a shielder, and she's calling herself Lady Me, and I'm like, how pretentious and snotty can you get, writers? Like, <laughs> serious. I'm like, this, like, what, what do you think this is? Like, I, I like, I, I cared about a shielder as she was in her first episode, but then she's just so different and I don't care. And I know, I know people feel differently and I'm, they're entitled to that opinion. I don't care. I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad they feel that way. I'm glad they like her. I didn't. And I kind of, and it bothered me that they kept bringing her back and bringing her back. And then finally she and Clara run off together and they're like, Oh, you want to shield her Clara spin off? I'm like, no, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Big finish. Maybe your comic book. Probably, yeah, but that's it. it. In a comic book. I don't want to see it on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's because yeah. I don't have, and everyone, and everyone was, I think everyone was connected to her because like, oh, it's Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones. I don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't have that connection. Maybe that's what they were banking on. And, and that may, that may have been it too, is they were, they were banking on the whole, the whole Game of Thrones thing. And I've watched Game of Thrones, so I'm, but I haven't, I'm not caught up by any means. I've only watched two seasons. Uh, <laughs> So I'm grossly behind. Um, I know I, I know enough I of her character on Game of Thrones to know that she's young, she's tough, she's been through some things, and in game in the Game of Thrones universe, really, she should be really mentally screwed up. Um, <laughs> well, everybody in Game of Thrones should be mentally. Well, screwed yes. Up. Uh, there are so many problems. There. Yeah. Anyway. So when she was a shielder pre becoming an immortal it was a similar character um and i think that's what people were hoping on but then the this this whole thing happens with her with the the meyer technology and all this and it essentially makes her immortal um technically she could still die but it would have to be I guess some sort of injury or whatever that's beyond the technology's ability to fix her uh, is a way I understand. See, that's the thing too, is the way the doctor explains it. It's like, she's immortal, but not really, but she's, she is, but she's not. It's like, well, you either are or you aren't <laughs> really. Yeah. There's not really pseudo immortality that I'm aware of, I guess. Um, because you think immortal, you think Jack. You think Captain Jack Harkness. Mm-hmm. So that's where your mind goes. Jack gets injured, mortally injured. He dies, and then he comes back to life. Good as new. Um, but I, hers is different, but it she's extra healthy or so. I don't know. Again, the doctor really didn't explain it that well. I say the doctor. The writers didn't explain it that well. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, the the whole woman who lived was a a plot device to show that yes, she's still alive and has been and uh, some unfortunate things have happened to her because she's lived so long. She's had children, but she's lost them. Um so she's not the young, innocent Viking girl that she was when we first met her. And that's understandable, but because we don't really see her experience that and she doesn't seem upset about it, she's very blasé about it per you know, and personally. Maybe, and that yeah. makes it hard to be sympathetic yeah. to and what she's gone what through. Yeah, getting at is like she doesn't acknowledge her... her know her, her her viking family because we we saw her with her father and her father was so upset when she was dying and we didn't see that we didn't see that any we didn't see any of that we didn't see like all we saw her was oh she had kids and they died and i'm like but i don't know these kids mm -hmm. and i know that sounds really callous and mean of me but i'm like i don't know who these kids are i don't know who her you know her her her, her husband was who she had these kids with i don't feel that loss like okay maybe if she was mourning her father and her village that might be different but because i because i met them and i knew i, right. I remember them yeah. i remember it, those people yeah because it's like the the doctor you know when doctor who came back and we find out that there's been this war and the doctor at least at the time <laughs> thought that he had destroyed his home planet and killed everyone he knew, and because you know, if you went and watched the first Doctor, you got to know got to know that he had a family through Susan. So we knew that he was a, a family guy. Um, we don't know what happened to Susan because last we saw her, she was left on Earth. But who who knows that she didn't go back to Gallifrey once the war started and she died in the Time War? We don't know that, but we know that the Doctor had a family. We've met some of his family. So when Doctor Who comes back and he's like, my family is dead. I was a father. I had children. I had grandchildren and they're all gone. We can be more sympathetic to it because we've seen it and we've met some of those people. Yep. And he's obviously very distraught about it. As much as he tries to put a brave face on, we know that it hurts him. And with a shielder, it's just not. <laughs> No, it's, it's, so that it's whole woman, the whole woman who lived thing really was just a, I think, a plot device and a season filler so that yeah. they could bring her back again for Face the Raven, where, again, she's also a, a plot device, but it's not just her. She's being used mm -hmm. by the Time Lords. Which we eventually find out. Although I was pretty sure that's who it was when she was like, "They made me do it," and the doctor's like, "Who?" Yeah. and she's just like, "Them," and I'm like, yeah, "He's going to Gallifrey. It's the Time Lords." <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so that I don't have a problem with because it it shows what we've already known if you're familiar with the big finish and the books and the classic series that the time lords were very manipulative and not very nice people romana aside <laughs> the rest of the time he, lords he were a bunch of jerks better, but... yeah <laughs> the time lords in general were a bunch of jerks <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So to see them be, they're, you know, they're free from the time lock and back and back to their old ways being manipulative so-and-sos is not a surprise. And just the fact that they used a shielder, I think it was, it was kind of the same thing for them being, them bringing Riggsy back for that same episode is it helped to have a familiar face. Yeah, and I liked Riggsy. Riggsy was was great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was glad to see him. And, you know, because it made sense because it's like, because we, we saw him in Flatline and we liked him there and he had that connection with Clara. And, and you know, and it, and it worked and we got to see him, you know, you know, make something of his life and do something, something good and exciting. And he was a cool character. Mm -hmm. And we saw like, oh, he has a family now. This is great. Mm-hmm. Very much so. I was really like, 
if he didn't have a family, I thought he might be a good um, companion. I don't want him to leave this room now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Good point. Yeah. Well, I was hoping Osgood could potentially come in and fill the spot for the new companion, but that doesn't seem that like that's going to be the case either. So, eh. yeah, we'll have to wait and see. For, I'm kind of surprised we haven't had a any news about that. Yeah. Well, apparently the hunt is still on. Uh, supposedly, if you believe what Stephen Moffat has said, which that is true. <laughs> rule one: Moffat lies. <laughs> Um, well, I guess now that we mentioned it, let's talk about the Time Lords and the return to Gallifrey. <laughs> Everybody's um, like, uh. Uh, <laughs> it kind of got it kind of it felt like it kind of, okay, well we can talk he we can talk heaven sent first. Yeah, heaven sent. <laughs> oh my gosh. Trippy, <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> we have, what, what more can we say that has not already been said? Just mm. this one is going to consistently, if it if it is not consistently up in the, at, at the very tippy top of those, what's the greatest Doctor Who story of all time lists? Mm. If it's not at the top of those lists, there's something wrong with this world. Yeah. I don't want to live in it. <laughs> It needs to be in the same discussion as Caves of Entrezani, City of Death, and Remembrance of the Daleks, and all those other ones that are just so, so great mm -hmm. that everybody just says are the best. Yeah. And the thing, the thing with Heaven Sent is it is amazingly good. It is so well written. It is so well acted. But mm -hmm. it is so different than yes. anything we've yes. seen. It's so good, yet it's so different, and it's still so good to have an episode where up until the end, you only have two characters, and only one of them speaks mm -hmm. in the entire episode. Yep. It is and completely doctor-driven. That episode was completely on Peter Capaldi's shoulders to pull that off, and he did. He nailed it. Just seven ways to Sunday and it's just because like I was watching it the first time and I'm like hey, what is going on and you but but you're not confused or I wasn't confused I was compelled like I gotta know what's going on here and he just makes it so interesting and like you said it's so different and and those those other episodes I was mentioning Blink is another one is these are episodes that you know, we Doctor Who does a certain thing most of the time, but then you get these 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 few episodes that just do something so different that you're not expecting, and like, and, and it's just it it's so it's almost unfair to compare it to the rest of the season because it's telling a much different story. Like like we're we're all pretty much in agreement that the Zygon two parter is really 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 good, mm -hmm. and Heaven Sent is really 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 good. But it's almost like Zygons is, to, is doing a completely different thing that Heaven Sent is doing. So it's like almost unfair to compare the two and say one is better than the other because they serve two different purposes. Mm -hmm. Because And it just because they are so different. But still, I mean, it doesn't diminish one or the other to say one is better. And it's just, it's like, it's like every now and then Doctor Who will experiment with some new storytelling technique or some new something. And sometimes it works. And sometimes it doesn't sleep no more. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like but, we, you know, and, then, yeah. and, and it's funny because when I was watching it, it's like you get the feeling that they 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 didn't have to film very much of it comparatively because there because there's so much that's repeated mm -hmm. and it's done and edited together in such a way that you don't really get tired of seeing it over and over again because that's the point: is the doctor dies and then he comes back and and all these things, and he does that for, what, two million? Two and a half, years? two, four and a half? I think it ends up being, like, four and a half million four, years. Yeah, four and a half million. It's just so, an insane number like that. And yeah. it's like, we were, we wanted the Doctor to find Gallifrey. We knew it would be difficult. And we thought, oh, it's going to take, you know, several seasons. Nope, it does it in an episode. But that's because we're, we're told it, it takes him, you know, four million years 
do all that. And, and, and we accept it, and it works in the story. Mm-hmm. And it's not just like, oh, he found Gallifrey too fast. No, he didn't. It may have taken him one episode or, or an episode's time, but, you know, he it, is. Yeah, it took so, an episode for us to watch. Yeah. <laughs> That that's the thing, and I, I was glued to to Heaven Set, just trying to figure out what in the heck was going on. And even once he died the first time and came back, it wasn't until I think it looped a couple more times before I realized exactly what was going on. Yes. Because like, you, even, it, yeah. Because until you start seeing the the diamond that's stronger than diamond actually start to chip away and see some significant wear, that you realize what exactly is happening. Even though the, we get these loops, and he's like, "It, you know, by my estimation, I'm two thousand years in the future. I'm four hundred thousand years in the future." Even though he's saying the number's getting bigger. Until you start seeing that diamond chip away, I was like, what is going on? I don't understand. But then is the, he finally got to that last punch and actually punched through. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we get more and more of that, of the, that story. The story about the bird and yeah. how he gets a little bit more every time before the, before the creature kills him and, and all of that. And it's, and the funny thing is, I watched it again, and I thought, okay, this isn't going to be as good watching it a second time. It's like, no, actually, it, it holds up on a second viewing. Mm-hmm. And it, you're, you're just like, you're because now you're you're looking for all the clues and things. So it's so it's like you can still go back and watch it, and watch it again, and still get something out of it and enjoy it. And I, I mean, I haven't gone back and watched it a third time yet, but I think I would still be all like, just glued to my glued to the screen, going, oh my gosh, I got to see this. But yeah, that one so good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. And it's, I mean, I I hate to say that Hellbent was almost kind of a letdown. But what wouldn't have been after that? Yeah, it, it, yeah. (laughs) It, it's really hard to follow up something like that, but the the whole um, the whole hellbent thing was in itself a bit. I mean, it's not. It, I, I can't. It's, it doesn't seem fair to compare the two because <laughs> they 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 really are kind of apples to oranges, just because heaven sent is so different as far as the storytelling aspect. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Hellbent is kind of what you would expect from Doctor Who. The Doctor is on a planet and there's a conflict and it needs to be resolved. But in this case, it's on Gallifrey. And um, the conflict is that... uh, some people have it out for him. <laughs> well, someone has it out for him. And I had to rewind that because because the they kept referring to him as Lord President. So I just assumed that he was the president of Gallifrey because the doctor, you know, occasionally would try to clay, stake his claim as being president of Gallifrey and they'd be like, uh, yeah, you walked away from that post. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so we gave it to someone else. So I didn't think anything of it when they're referring to this guy as Lord President. Like, well, somebody had to be president when the doctor wasn't there. So that's yeah. fine. But then when the guys are like, I am Rassilon. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, saw that I had to rewind that and hear him say that again. Like, did he say he was Rassilon? <laughs> he did. He said he was Rassilon. Okay. Well, apparently, <laughs> Timothy Dalton's Rassilon regenerated at some point. <laughs> yeah. Probably as the result of the master's attack on him. Probably. At the end of time. Probably. Yeah. And a funny thing is, is, is you know, everybody, you know, that we, we talked about how Rassilon was probably like, you know, brought back by the Time Lords during the Time War. And even in the the, uh, the 50th anniversary, they had that one, that one general in there and they're all saying like, you know, the council, they've got their own thing and they're, 
that crap crazy so we'll just let them do their thing and we're gonna go actually fight the war and, and it was, <laughs> so it kind of fixes the end of time where it's where, where people were kind of like what the heck are you doing and then we see Rassilon again and he's this ineffectual kind of wimpy little guy and and he just the doctor just kind of you know does away with him and that's the end of that mm-hmm but, so that kind of that that fixes a few things. Yes, yes, it 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 does. No, so, but just I was it was one of those like wait what <laughs> did I yeah, hear what I, I think I heard? I kind of suspected at first. I'm like no way they're not bringing him. Oh okay they did. Okay. Yeah. Well and then you realize he's got the glove on his hand. Like oh uh, okay. Yeah. The the you know the the objects de Rassilon. He decided to go with the the almighty glove of Rassilon as opposed to, you know, the staff of Rassilon and the teacup of Rassilon and the shoelace of Rassilon. <laughs> <laughs> the hair comb of Rassilon. All the objects that Rassilon has. <laughs> and he was going to use that thing on the doctor, too. Yep. Oh. Um, I, I, I'm not even going to try and speculate what they may do with Russell on the future. I know the guys have um, that, you know, that coming forward or coming in the future that we may get this whole wrath of Russell on Russell, Russell on's revenge. <laughs> Cause <laughs> well, Russell on has to have us put his name on everything. So why not revenge of Russell on? <laughs> I, I want him to do wrath of Russell on and yeah. that'll really tick all the Star Trek fans yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not that I have anything against Star Trek fans. I am marrying a Star Trek fan. <laughs> I just think it would be funny. And he would get the joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. But I'm not even going to try and speculate on what we may do with Rassilon in the future. And the fact that um, now Rassilon is out there um, and is ticked off at the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> for getting kicked off oh, again. Oh, well, it's like, it's like, get in line. Yeah, <laughs> but then Missy is still out there. So, <laughs> yep. it would be interesting to see Missy and the Doctor truly team up and face Rassilon. That could be interesting. I, I, I'd go for that. <laughs> Yeah, because heaven forbid someone tried to destroy the doctor other than other than the master, because <laughs> that's Missy's job. <laughs> so Missy will take out anyone who tries to destroy the doctor in her stead, because <laughs> that's the way nemesis ish yep. stuff works. Um, so, yep. um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, Gallifrey's back. The doctor kind of put himself in charge by kicking Rassilon off the planet, but then he proceeded to leave with Clara. So he's just ran off from Gallifrey again. And and Gallifrey just kind of is, like, ignored. He's like, okay, we found Gallifrey. Now we're going to go, you know, resurrect Clara after dying and as she dies and face the raven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Which is... It's, it, you know, and the the doctor's reaction to being back on Gallifrey may, and how this wall would have played out, may have been completely different if Clara wasn't a factor. Yeah. Because we saw how mad he got at the end of Death in Heaven when he went looking <laughs> and Gallifrey oh, wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. And he beats the TARDIS console because he's so mad. Yeah. And he well, seems... Part of that, part oh, of that too, yeah. could have been because Missy lied to him. Well, part yeah, that too. Missy lied to him. Yeah. That, I'm not entirely convinced she did, but that's another topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so, yeah, because cause after, you know, he's dealing with, with Clara's death and she, you know, tells him, you know, don't take out your revenge, you know, be the doctor, don't do all these things. And, and, and you know, that, you know, that... We didn't really talk about this, but but that those two that that exchange at the end of Face to Raven, you know, is on par with the speech at the end of the Zygon two parter. Like this 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 season was a good season for for awesome speeches and awesome monologues, or well, in that case, it'd be a dialogue. But yeah, 
with, with the car with Clara and the doctor going back and forth with, like that and it's just I don't know just a lot of the a lot of the the the, the dialogue in this in this season was just so good just top notch mm-hmm. all the way around I'm like I can't I mean I don't know I just I'm praising this season to to high heaven my few quibbles about a few things notwithstanding but yeah. whatever um yeah, I don't. I mean, I mean, yeah. If, if Clara's death had not been a, a factor, the doctor would be actually probably happy to have found Gallifrey. But he's, we've seen how you know when he gets his mind focused on something, he, you know, he, he's very focused, laser like on that. And you know, he, at that moment, he was concerned with Clara, and he's like, you know, he found Gallifrey, which was his goal originally, mm-hmm. but now he doesn't care because Clara's not there to. To, to to share it with him and it, it in a way I guess it because she was the one in the 50th anniversary who who suggested that they find another way to save Gallifrey so maybe that was part of it too is like you know because she saved she saved Gallifrey ultimately with her with her actions and, and encouraging the doctor and you know and they basically inadvertently and indirectly but they basically killed her for it yeah. Didn't yeah. think about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From a certain point of view. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Uh, mm-hmm. But now she's not, well, she's dead, but she's not. <laughs> she's, she's, she's suspended in time. She's in limbo, though, so, which, well, if if the doctor is correct, and I was I would assume he is saying her her death is a fixed point now, mm-hmm. that she does have to go back, and I think eventually she will go back. But it's how long can she and a shielder run around in their diner TARDIS <laughs> before? time starts becoming affected by her not mm-hmm. going back. Going back and dying. And, you know, can can her almost dead body take that stress, I guess? Yeah, exactly. She's not aging, but at the same time, it's kind of like, eh. Yeah. At some point, you know, she's got to go back. Yes. It's just how, how long. Because we've seen in... Um, well, we saw all the way back in, in Father's Day that almost instantaneously when Pete didn't die, mm-hmm. it had an effect on time. Yeah. So, and he, he was actually alive as opposed to Clara, who is neither dead or alive because she doesn't have a pulse. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, does she need to breathe? Does she need to eat? Yeah. I mean, she's does obviously she breathing. Eat? Or oh, something. Yeah. <laughs> She's able to talk, at the very yeah. least. <laughs> but she... It, it's not like she doesn't have a pulse because her heart stopped beating. Is The doctor pulled her out of her time stream before that last heartbeat. Mm-hmm. So... Ugh, that's, it's, it's just one of those things that... It's one of those hand wavy things. Like it is. It's it, it, don't well, look too close yeah. to the science. It's a Stephen Moffat or thing too, or like unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I I don't know if yeah, and I don't know if if a shielder, because I mean she and Clara really don't know each other. No, not really. So for them to run off like seems a bit odd. Yeah. As well. So, I'm sure eventually they'll get to know each other, but still. I'm, I'm sure they will, but it's just kind of like, that's yeah. an interesting pairing. Yeah. I, I do... And they're both from... They apparently know each other well enough to want to maybe get to know each other better. Which True. Could, and... Clara can't go back to her life on Earth. Yeah. They got this TARDIS. A shield has lived to the end of the universe already, so she can't go so she can't really go back to anything. She just, like she's got nothing to go back to either, really. 
Yeah. They're just off doing the Thelma and Louise. Yeah. <laughs> sort of thing, I guess. Yeah. Although, and, and I'm fine with it. I'm just kind of like a diner. Like, how's that going to, like, because the TARDIS, the, the doctor's TARDIS, is a police box, and, you know, that will fit in, you know, random little corners and things. Diner's going to be a little harder to hide. Mm -hmm. Just a bit. And then there's the whole aspect of it looks an awful lot like the diner that Eleven (laughs) was in with with Amy and Rory and River. It it probably copied that diner. Yeah. It could just be the BBC reusing props because they're on a budget. Yeah. Rock or quarries. Sets, rather. Yeah. Rock or quarries. Yeah. Sets. yeah. But if we shoot this rock quarry from this angle that hasn't been used yet, <laughs> it looks like a completely different planet. Yeah. Yeah, well, have you seen the thing where Amy and Rory apparently live on the street Pete died on? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it, I'm like, I remember this. <laughs> Yeah. If, look, if you compare the shots of the street Amy and Rory live on in um, Series 7, like the house the Doctor gets them at the end of Series 6, yeah, compare the, that street from the, the shot in uh, Power of 3 with the shot from Father's Day. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> like, Doctor, you're kind of morbid. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's probably not actually the same street in the Doctor Who universe, but they shot in the, in the same yeah. same neighborhood. It, 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 they they could they could get filming permits or however that stuff works over in Britain. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the UK. We have twelve actors, five sets, one TARDIS, and three and a half streets that we can film on. Yeah, and, and one, one rock beach. quarry, one beach, and one rock and one beach. Yeah. Yep. Because the beach from uh, Time of Angels, Flesh and Stone is the same as the one yes. as Dalek of Old Stratton. Yep, I remember that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. The but UK, you, it's really you know, that big. So. <laughs> the UK is very small. Yes, that is that is true. <laughs> that is true. You, you you've heard you've heard the saying that. To, to people in Europe, a hundred miles is a long way. To people in, in the United States, a hundred years is a long time. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, so the doctor is off, and he remembers Clara, but he doesn't remember Clara, and Clara is off on on at grand adventures with a shielder in space, and that. Kind of brings us to Christmas. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And the return of River Song. Which I, I found out that the day they wrapped the Christmas uh, filming was the last day of Salt Lake Comic Con. So, well, there you go. You know, I kind of. Forgive I her? Kind of, yeah, I forgive her. <laughs> Alex <laughs> Kingston, you are forgiven. I, yeah. I mean, I was going to forgive her anyway, but no. Now I that guess, we've seen yeah, it, uh, you're really forgiven. <laughs> Yeah, because they, they got Jenna after Alex canceled, although they, she might have already been scheduled. I don't know. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, husbands and River Song. <laughs> husbands and um, apparently at least two wives. Yeah. I, I know we're not going to get it, but I want more with River and, and 12. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I sincerely do, but, you know, this this is definitely River's last hurrah. And, well, yeah. Well, it, on TV. Yeah. Yeah, they could do something with the 24 years that they're apparently going to be yeah, on Derillium. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a big finish. Yeah, big, you know, that, that, that's plenty, plenty of time for Big Finish to do some stuff. But as far as TV goes, and at this point, like, yes, I would want to see four of them together. But at the same time, I'm like, I would almost ruin the story. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I, I, I made this guy, but I loved it so, so much. Perfectly, it did. It really did. And I, at first, I thought, okay, this is just going to be a fun little romp. They got Alex Kingston back, and you know, this is just going to be, you know, sweet and cute and Christmas. Mm-hmm. And then it was like really emotional and heavy, and 
It was also hilarious. It was, and hilarious. It was fun and sweet and cute and Christmas. I and laughed so yeah. hard when the I I know some of you thought that the doctor, the whole doctor's pretending he'd never seen the inside of the TARDIS before was a, a bit long running, but oh my god, <laughs> it was perfect. Though. I. My sides like, were hurting going so on on. I was laughing. Yeah, we were all like, Jared is all, it went to, you know, he's going pretty overboard at this. And then it That's has the, the whole line, point. And he has a line that says, that he says, I just wanted to see that done what, properly. Yeah, I've always wanted to see that done properly. I'm like, okay, that's safe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. <laughs> but it's just like, really don't. <laughs> Okay, you, you can stop. Now. It was very meta, is what it was. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. It was a nice little fan wink to, like, we know. Like, this is yeah. what y'all think. It. And he doesn't look directly at camera, but you can tell he was talking to us. Yeah. yeah. There was a bit of fourth wall there. A little bit. Well, yeah. and, and speaking of the fourth wall, I think I heard it shatter when he said people need a flow chart to understand his <laughs> <laughs> And then he goes, I'm going to need a bigger flow chart. You know, people were all running to their computers like, I need to, you know, where does this all fit in? And then they explained that it's, you know, right after Manhattan and everything. Right. And, which and which that's is that's why I think River was so dense to realizing that he was the doctor. Cause I think, I think that she left Manhattan and we know what happened to that iteration. The doctor goes right into the snowman where he's in exile up in the clouds and not wanting to talk to, talk to anyone. And, you know, river in the, with the departure of Amy and Rory, she was really the strong one mm -hmm. as Amy and Rory leave because, you know, the doctor's there in that graveyard. He's just losing it. And River is there, you know, holding his hand and staring at the angel, <laughs> making sure, yeah, making sure that the angel doesn't move again. Yeah. Um, so and she's, been... this, this is her, instead of probably going off and grieving, she's jumped right into being River Song archaeologist adventure and is just trying not to think. You know, she probably wants to find the doctor, obviously, but at the same time, she doesn't want to think about what she just left with a lot. It with all the pictures. Yeah, yeah, that was good. And then and he gets, the doctor gets to the end and flips up and like, that's it. They, they, they don't know about this. Nope. <laughs> nope. They don't. It, it goes up well, to, the, to the last me, but what? <laughs> where, where's the rest of me? Yeah. The, the, funny thing, the funny thing is, kind of going back to. And I, and I can't take credit for this. I saw this. I saw this on Tumblr. Someone explaining this, and this was kind of my, my uh, process when I was thinking about like how this connects to season two or season two, season nine. Um, is that you know Clara? You know, after Danny died, she kind of got reckless, mm -hmm. and that was the, like her that development, and that was how she grieved over Danny. And River kind of feels like it's the same way. Like you know, she saw her parents. You know. That, you know, taken away by the angels and the and the doctor's gone, and so this is her being kind of reckless in the, in a similar way as Clara was, and 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 grieving it in this way, and yeah, you know, but you know, a little bit more and and on her own and doing her own thing, and so I kind of I kind of feel like, but um, and it, you know, now that we've seen the doctor and he is mourning Clara in in his way as well, you don't it, you know it's not overt. Because, like you said, it, this is this the story is very standalone. But if you take it as you know, this is after the events of of Hellbent. The Doctor, he's he's alone. Like he's got that sign outside. Although that's very Twelfth Doctor, you know, carolers will be criticized <laughs> outside the TARDIS. But he's like he's he just he just wants to be left alone and, and do his own thing. He's mad at the TARDIS for giving him reindeer antlers. Holographic antlers. <laughs> yeah, holographic antlers. And so, you know, they kind of are, are mirror images of each other in that they're like, you know, they, they, they want to be they're alone at the same time. A different loss. Mm. Yes. And, and, you know, and they don't, they don't admit that they're grieving. They don't admit that they need someone else to grieve with them or, you know, to be there with them and or have adventure or, or whatever, because they're just, they're, they have these very strong personalities and it's like, you know, don't bother me. I'm you know, saving the world or, or, you know, 
or, or Rivers all like, I know how to play the TARDIS, and the Doctor is being very, very coy and like, you know, what does that button do, or, or you know, different things. And, that button. That's that button. Avoid next seven. Avoid next seven, then. I <laughs> know that was... Oh, it was just, it was yeah. so much fun. The, the, my only thing with once they get into the TARDIS, and again, that may just be River had her mind set on something and was just uber focused and not really paying attention to the very obvious signs around her. <laughs> <laughs> but she obviously knows all of the doctor's faces up until this one, but. Maybe she, I, I would assume that she didn't bat an eye at the TARDIS interior, so she knows the Doctor's faces, but not all the TARDIS desktops. Because I would think that if it was a desktop that she had never seen before, and if she'd seen all the Virgin's interiors for each of the faces that she knew, then that wouldn't that have been, like, a big red flag? But... <laughs> But she does mention having borrowed the TARDIS and the Doctor not noticing. So maybe she borrow, she's borrowed it with this desktop scene before. And not realized which and Doctor realized it belonged to? And it belonged to a face that she had she never seen. Know. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Because, uh, you know, all of us as Uber fans, we see the inter TARDIS interior and we're like, that Doctor. <laughs> we know which Doctor it belongs to. It apparently doesn't connect or particular console room designed to a particular base. I guess not. So, But he, that is a good point, though, that if she's borrowed, obviously borrowed the TARDIS, and not realize which doctor she was borrowing it from, then, yeah, there there would be. Especially, I, I also, especially considering... In and, yeah. And it is mostly similar to Matt Smith's second, mm -hmm. which... Yeah. She's obviously had experience with. Right, yeah. Well, and there's also the fact that the TARDIS can have multiple console rooms, which we saw with the fourth Doctor. Because we saw the all wood console <laughs> room, too, so. Yep. <laughs> That's always a possibility as well. That when... And um, I was just, I've been rewatching Series 6 a bit, and the TARDIS mentions having archived like 30 different desktop designs. And River is a child of the TARDIS, as mentioned in Let's Kill Hitler. Yeah. So it's possible that she knows all 30 archived consoles and doesn't bat an eye at any of them. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. Hmm. Questions, questions. <laughs> <laughs> It's like we don't know what all Rivers got in that dot written in that diary of her. No. <laughs> well, and two on King Hydro Flex first, and I was wondering, are we going to see the state of temporal grace at all? <laughs> <laughs> I think the state of temporal grace is long gone. <laughs> yes, probably I mean, has to. The, the one and only time we've seen it work was in uh, Hand of Fear. I think it broke shortly after that, and it's been broken ever since. And the doctor just likes to pretend that it's not to try and mm -hmm. put people using weapons yeah. in the TARDIS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, the TARDIS, the state of temporal grace has been broken for a long time, <laughs> no matter what the doctor might say. Yes, I think it, a lot of it is rule one, the doctor lies. Yeah. Yes. Rule two, the doctor makes up a lot of things. <laughs> that is true, and I think it's because he's forgotten most of what he <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know. The state of temporal grace is broken. Yeah. Well, he did throw the TARDIS manual into Supernova. Uh, Supernova. Yeah. Yeah. Although he could go get a Shielders if he could remember <laughs> Because the Shielders doesn't know what she's doing reading it. <laughs> he could just get her copy and read it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, oh my goodness. Just Alex and Peter, their chemistry together. Oh, so good. I'm like, this so, is why I want them. 
I want them together so good. again. Even so good. So I, I am sorry, well. David. I am sorry, Matt. But too bad. I'm so glad that they brought her back. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially Matt. <laughs> Especially Matt, because well, most of her stories were with Matt. Matt. Yeah. Yep. Except for the two, her two end points, which <laughs> are on either side of the Matt Smith era. Yeah. Which I think it's, I think it feels fitting because it it does. It's sort of it's it's uh, it's, it's it's a nice bookend. Mm-hmm. Which not no like, yeah, considering where <laughs> River's with, going next. It's a nice parallel. Parallel, there you go. Yeah, that's a good one. That that one works too. Yeah. And I like I like how, you know, it starts and she's like, You're not even wearing a real suit. And, and she doesn't recognize it. <laughs> but he did him. mention it. he's got he had a new haircut. You showed yeah. up to my doorstep in a new haircut and a suit. And a suit. And yeah, because she mentions all that stuff and going to the and, and, and going and to the the silent powers of Force of the Dead. Yeah, because I also rewatched that after I uh, watching because, the Christmas special, which I need to do now. Which yeah, I want to, and I'm just like, it's, yeah, no, it's, it, 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 yeah. I think, yeah, I would say I had I that, I didn't think of that, but yeah, I, I that's on my to do list now is to to rewatch that, cause especially knowing now. That if you re if you watch, you know River's first story, <laughs> as far as yeah. we saw it, um, that she goes in and meets the doctor, and he has no idea who she is. So first off, she knows that he doesn't know who she is. She knows her diary is pretty much full. So odds are she's gonna die. But then she also knows that the doctor has more regenerations coming to him. He's going to somehow get past the the the, the regeneration name. loophole. So she knows that too and can't say anything. <laughs> I know because yeah. at this point he's not quite almost out of regenerations because at this point this is before the meta crisis. So he's got two left. Yes. But, but still, she doesn't know that, like, because she probably knows about the meta crisis as well. Mm hmm. Because right? she has 12 faces, and those 12 faces, <laughs> but she, like, she knows, she knows that there's only 12 faces, which means she knows that one face is twice. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And, well, it's funny because, you know, she has the, that, that wallet with all that, so it's like, it's just it's just interesting because we're we're used to River knowing, you know, all the doctors' faces except she doesn't have the the twelfth one or she doesn't have the, which you know obviously is what the crux of this whole episode is, mm -hmm. <laughs> is that she doesn't know that face and even after all all the time times he says I'm the doctor she's like she's like yes that's why I hired you yeah <laughs> to, to kill her you're very quick yes for a doctor yes yes <laughs> like really. <laughs> and then when she finally gets it, and he and says hello it. sweetie oh my god hello. my heart melted you notice, you notice the doctor said hello sweetie and spoilers and River's songs and River said neither of those in this episode yeah but just she was River River has her her heartfelt impassioned speech moment mm -hmm. about how the doctor doesn't love her, has never loved her, even though she loves him. Of course, we know that's crap. But, you know, River is convinced that the doctor never loved her, but she doesn't care. Um, well, part and, of but it then was stalling you just, for the meteor strike. Well, that too. But, <laughs> but, uh, but then, you know, she turns and sees him, and he's just looking at her with this look, and just in that really quiet... He just softly says, hello, sweetie, and my heart just goes, oh, you're so cute. She sees him, she realizes that it's him, and yeah. that he does love her. Yeah. <laughs> he, is, he is standing in danger with her in that moment. Yeah. Side by yeah. side, the Doctor and River song. I mean, he kind of got there through, through 
some rather interesting circumstances. Right. But that's the way he gets into everything. So. <laughs> True. Yeah, pretty much. But it's like it's not like he's there because she's in danger. It's there. It's there. It's because he's been there the whole time and right. got into danger with her. Right. And when he encounter, first encountered her, he had no idea that she was going to get in this danger. Yeah. Well, he was. I mean, he was in there arguing with the TARDIS when um. The little bald guy came and knocked at the door and like, are you a surgeon? Yeah, yeah sort of. No, no, yeah. Yeah, sure, whatever. Why? <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, goodness. So good. So, so good. Really? So this... good. They, they play yeah. off each other so well. I mean, we not that we have a whole lot of Christmas specials to choose and, from. Oh, oh, they both but... married Cleopatra. Yes. <laughs> and and apparently Stephen Fry. <laughs> One of them married Stephen. Does Stephen Fry know that? Uh, <laughs> I need to check Stephen Fry's Twitter handle and see if he said anything since that aired. Um, I can't wait to hear Glenn's reaction because he was a he's a big Stephen Fry fan. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh. Now, did, did, if they both married Cleopatra, do they mean the actual Cleopatra or when River was posing as Cleopatra? Yeah, because I, I wondered that because I remembered, like, yeah, she, she impersonated Cleopatra yeah, think, at one point. I think she was just posing as Cleopatra for the Pandorica Obens thing. That's so, true. Yeah. Probably they both married the real Cleopatra. <laughs> probably. With oh these two, gosh. you never can tell. No, that's true. Yeah, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> they, and apparently in, Do in the Doctor Who universe, marriage is a very flexible institution. <laughs> <laughs> so, considering, you know, the Doctor and River married in a timeline that no longer exists. So. <laughs> and they've both been married multiple times without any sort of divorce or anything so you know well time travel that kind of well yeah but still it. you know very being married to potentially multiple people at the same time even though it's not the same time because there are different plants in different time zones time eras <laughs> Something like, like i said marriage is a very flexible thing in doctor who apparently apparently yeah <laughs> it's like i'm married to someone who hasn't even born yet oh i'm laughing at this <laughs> Just see if they can... so. I have seen one flow chart where they've put together the episodes of River Song's timeline in chronological order from her birth to her death mm -hmm. with this now, now added to it. Whole... With this now but added to Radio it. Radio yeah. Times has a flow chart. Yeah. <laughs> flow chart. Flow chart. <laughs> <sighs> As you can see from this flow chart. <laughs> If you watch, if you, let's see, if you watch, uh, Let's Kill Hitler, and this, and then this, and then this, and this, it makes sense somewhere. Yeah. I think I've said before, I've tried to explain River Song to Chauncey before, and you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't just verbally explain. Uh, told him that he was married to River. <laughs> So, so yeah, yeah so, someone Stephen, someone's told him. Yeah, Stephen Fry has responded. Oh, okay. Was, yeah, apparently, well, was it a positive sure response? <laughs> yeah, he just, it just it, it sounds like he didn't actually watch the episode oh. as of this tweet. He's like, he said, "Good Lord, really? Was I a dark and dreadful figure or a force for light and harmony in the universe?" And someone says, <laughs> "Alex Kingston is your future ex-wife." <laughs> That, that's what someone else responded to. And someone else was like, you were a romantic entanglement of River Song. <coughs> you okay? <laughs> she got so excited. Uh, it's all Tommy Wami, but congrats on your marriage to River Song. Yeah, really? <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my! Okay, sorry. I was eating Skittles, and a bit of one went down the wrong hole. Uh oh! Oops. 
It's okay. It's all cleared up. That's good. Good. We can't. We can't you know? do. We can't do the Heimlich over Skype. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> the technology hasn't gone that far yet. Nope. <laughs> no. 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 It hasn't. Sadly, no. Nope. Oh. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. And I guess now we know, unless she's lying about her age, which is possible because the doctor lies about his age. But as as far as we know, River thinks that she, <coughs> she's two hundred years old. <coughs> it's contagious. Yeah. I'm not eating any skittles. I'm so. I promise. <laughs> we may be to the point where it's like where we're like telling you to wrap it up. But anyway, maybe yeah, I'm just um, I'm choking because I'm jealous of how good River looks at being 200 years old. I don't know. I know, and like <laughs> that, that, that dress now. Now I got to talk about River's clothes because I never do this, but her her outfits, like the the second one that she had, the 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 one the, the sparkly top and the yeah, long the skirt top and the and the long skirt that you know she was in for uh, during the the restaurant. I'm like, I want that dress. I would. I could actually probably pull that dress off because, because uh, Alex Kingston and I have sort of a similar build. Like we're not stick straight, skinny <laughs> creatures, and, and I have curly hair like hers. <laughs> like I like cosplay for song. You could cosplay pull it that off. version of song. You could, yeah. I could. I'd, like, I'd actually like to see that. <laughs> I, yeah. I would. I think I would enjoy wearing that dress. And I just like the idea of having clothing in a bottle. It's red dress from the end. Yes, I like that one too. And I'm like, man, I want to, because I have cosplayed River Song before, but it was her, it was her, uh, her, her uh, impossible astronaut cowboy outfit because I can do that. I can find the pieces easier. Yeah. But yeah, that. Oh my gosh, she just. I the whole time I'm watching that, I'm like, man, she just looks. I don't know her costumers, her hair, her hairdressers, and makeup. They make her look good. Yeah. yeah. Well, with Alex, I don't think that's hard. <laughs> no, that's no. That is true. I just... I, she was a good-looking woman. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I admire her look. To get ready. Yeah, really. I love yeah, the idea of a whole evening gown in a bottle. Ray. It was so <laughs> dressed. Ray was perfect. I'm like, I want that. I yeah. need that technology. Right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, why can't we, can't we make, why can't we make this happen? Come on. Yeah. Well, that is like the fifty-something century. Well, yeah. True. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> I still want it. <laughs> Just gotta wait a long time to get it. That's all. We need time travel. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We do. I need a TARDIS. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? Yeah. <clears throat> well. But let's let's talk a bit about the ending yeah. of this because oh my gosh. Like I don't know what it is about this show. They just always seem to find just the right the right thing to say at the exact right time. And it just it's just perfect. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't I don't know what I'm trying to explain. Yeah. Well, I mean if you're if you're familiar with and that's that's what I was trying to say early on is um is this not only ties into series nine but everything that River has been in as a character, so you have to go all the way back to what, series four <laughs> to get River you know, for River's yeah. first appearance and then pretty much almost all of Matt Smith's run up until Amy and Roy leaving. So, you know, all the way through halfway through season seven <laughs> for, for River Song's timeline. So this ties into a lot of previous who, and if you're, if you can keep River's timeline somewhat proper in your head, um, you know, the, the few things that they dropped when like they're flipping through uh, River's diary and she's like, yeah, you know, Get wanting trying to get back and you know was it Jim the fish? Jim the fish. Jim the fish. There was, there was the the, <laughs> the Pandorica Byzantium. Speaking of going to, through River's diary, the um 
Well, I mean, makes mention of didn't they make a movie of the crash of the Byzantium and someone on Tumblr mentioned that would be a bad idea seen as if the image of an angel becomes an angel. Oh yeah, yeah don't do that. Yeah, Nobody knew that. that. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently they did do that. I mean, well, and those this, people are in trouble. A movie of that. Well, yeah. they were very dumb. Yes. That was a very <laughs> dumb move. <laughs> very, very um, so knowing that we've previously had River mention, I think, about the towers of Derillium, uh, but they'd never got they, never they're, gotten there. They're mentioned in uh, Forest of the Dead. Yeah, and then apparently uh, last night the short. Uh, the series six box set was one of the times he canceled at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which if she's asking the doctor, if we've done that yet, then she has done it. But in theory, after the tower, she's headed to the library. Cause now she's got the sun. Uh, again, the, river's well, timeline is the, with the context that she mentions Derillium in is when she's plugged herself into the library computer and is about to well yeah allow yeah. Cal to use her memory space to mm -hmm. offload yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah. And she, so. she's explained that. Yeah, it, it's it's her how he reacted. To yeah, her means that he knew she was coming. Yeah, and he knew she was coming because she explained about Drillium. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Again, <laughs> timey wimey. <laughs> You gotta get, oh, gotta, get the, the, gotta get the stories straight in your head. The thing she mentioned when she was going through the diary was uh, Crash of the Byzantium and Picnic at, at, at Asgard. Yeah. The other. yeah. <laughs> Which both of those were brought up when Fleming was reading her diary. Right. Yeah. That, the biggest thing was um, her opening that box and that Sonic being in there. Yeah. Yeah. The yes. yeah. The Sonic was kind of like, <gasps> and then you're like, oh. There they go. <laughs> like, yeah, she got her Sonic. Oh, I know where she's going to use that. I'm like, oh, I know where this is going, and I don't know that I like it. Yeah. 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 But here we go. Yeah. So At it, some point during the 24 years, he must have explained the settings because of the whole red setting, dampers. Yeah. And, yeah. Now, do do you think at this point, the while they're on on Derillium during that twenty four year twenty four years, is this the same time that they're together where she makes the doctor tell him her name or hit tell her his name? It must be. Because we don't know if she knows it until after she's dead in. Uh, Name of the Doctor. Well, because she tells, she whispers it in the Tenth Doctor's ear in Silence in the Library. Right. And then in the Name of the Doctor, she uses she it. Post that. She explains that she made the Doctor tell her, right. and then she uses it to open his tomb. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but as far as as far as we know, she doesn't know it yet. Before. As far as yeah, as far as we know, she because he because he didn't because he time. didn't tell her his name in the wedding of River Song. He said that's what he was saying. That's what he's saying for Amy. I think in Roy, Amy and Rory's benefit to hide the whole uh, his his plan. Um, mm -hmm. So uh -huh. that I would I would assume that while they're on well, Derillium, that that's that's when that he finally told her. Possible for when he might be able to tell people someone his name is when he was dying or when he was getting married. And both of, we saw both of those things happen and he didn't, and he whispered both times he whispered something in River's ear and neither time was it his name. Right. And she says in name of the doctor that she made him tell her. So <laughs> this, this might, this might be it. And he, he may have been more, um, pliable to to giving in to telling her because they're yes, having this nice romantic it. night and you know after being after her going on her rant about him never loving her and it's obvious that he does love her so he may have been more inclined to tell her even with her yeah. needling him 
to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so. They have a very interesting relationship. <laughs> yes, they do. To say the least. <laughs> but it's wonderful. I love it. It it, it really is. And like is. at the end of this, it's like how can you how can you not know that the, the doctor and River love each other? I mean mm. it's it's different than a different romance than what we've been presented in other stories and media, but that's because River and the doctor are very different people anyway. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yep. And we wouldn't have them any other way. Nope. And I will miss River, but I think yeah, her 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 story On TV. Her story is has run its course. On T V. She is gonna be On in TV. Big Finish. Yeah, Big Finish. She, there's yes. plenty to do yet. And we I'm will get more inclined to like I wasn't like the River Song stories were kinda of low on my list of big fish priorities. And it, I think this episode has raised it slightly. <laughs> yeah. It's still, there's still a lot to, like, there's the 10th Doctor stuff, there's the War Doctor stuff, there's... <sighs> the Torchwood. Yeah, we, <laughs> we could sit and listen to nothing but Big Finish, and it would take us, like, years and years to... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We'd need those 24-year... <laughs> evenings on Derillium just to try and get through Big Fish. Yep. Like, like I'm going to take one night and listen to as much Big Finish as possible on Derillium. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can stay awake for 24 years, right? <laughs> yeah. Totally. You can make it work. Load it up, let it go. Yep. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. I like it. Oh. First, the way my brain's work, brain works, I'd have to like lay down somewhere on Derillium, close my eyes, put my headphones on, and just stay there while I listened. Yeah. Because <laughs> yep. I, I can't multitask in that way. So if, I, if I'm if i listening to an odd, like Big Fish or a podcast or something, I have to be like either doing something that doing nothing or doing something that doesn't require a lot of my attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like my work. Yeah. <laughs> I hear ya. Preach. So, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to like just sit and listen. Mm-hmm. For 24 years. <laughs> for 24 years. <laughs> yep. It can be done. Not really, but... I would have been like... I mean, it'd probably be hard because they keep on adding stuff. But what if anyone added up the uh, exactly how long it would take to listen the to everything? The length of all the big all the big finish audience. Uh, wow. That would take a really long time. To long, 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 long time. <laughs> they keep adding to it. Not that we're complaining. No, no, no. <laughs> Just saying. Well, and there's a whole bunch of Big Finish that I'm probably never going to listen to, like, for shows that I don't watch or where. Well, yeah. yeah. Because they got a lot of stuff besides Doctor Who, and I'm not... Yeah, I mean, Doctor that, Who's and even the just their started. Doctor Who-related stuff is, like, this massive pile. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, we still have Big Finish on the list of uh, things we need to discuss on this show. <laughs> so. well, have to do Next it summer, summer maybe? Yeah. Summer after yeah. that? Yeah. Yep. Maybe all our stuff's on summer hiatus. Yeah. Because heaven knows we're getting, we're all, uh, the fact that we're getting into a new year before we know it, stuff's going to be back, so. Yeah, I was actually reading a list of, like, not all the shows I watch, but a lot of the shows that I watch are coming back. I'm like, oh, yay. I guess we can find that. Yeah, I need to. Keep track of all my shows. Yeah. Yep. Gotta put it on a calendar. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm Agent Carter and Once Upon a Time. Uh, <laughs> Those all the premieres of shows. Yeah. So is Librarians done this season done now or what? Yep. Yes. Today was yep. the finale, which Today I have not watched because okay. it hasn't hit iTunes yet. Okay, but I, I. I got spoiled. I need to get caught up on that. I haven't gotten spoiled yet. I'm 
Yeah, probably going to get caught up on that once we finish recording. <laughs> go for it. I would, too, but I don't want to go downstairs. <laughs> I'll watch it tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day. Yeah. For those of you who don't have to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, actually, miss, I haven't walked, like, it's been a week and I miss it already. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much. a 345 showing of Star Wars Force Awakens that I'm going to tomorrow. No. Fun. Yay. All right. Okay. I think I think we're done. <laughs> I think we are too. Uh, so before we get wrapped up, if any of you fine listeners out there want to send us feedback, we, we you can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail dot com, or you can simply go to our website the five ish fangirls podcast dot blogspot dot com and find all of our links to social media that you could contact us at and you can leave there's there's a feedback form uh, there is a link to our facebook page to twitter to tumblr pinterest instagram itunes youtube and patreon and you can find us all of those fine websites where you can show your support which we love we love hearing from our, our listeners so 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 do do give us a a look up or comment or whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> my brain's not working <laughs> the uh, christmas hangover christmas <sighs> hangover and then i got new year's and then after that it's back to real life and i'm trying to think about it too much anyway yeah. so yeah so find us on all those on all those great places why don't you mm-hmm. and we post links to things we we think are of and are, are of interest that we hope our audience will find it will be of interest as well mm-hmm and thank you for supporting us. And this is the end of 2015, and you know all 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 the great things that have gone on this year. And and I hope we'll have more great things to come in 2016. Yep. Want you all to be a part of it. So yep, come join us, friends, yep. Romans, countrymen, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Lend me your squee. Lend me your squee. Ooh, you should use that as a tagline one of these days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh bye okay <laughs> alrighty then well with that uh, have a safe new year everybody yeah yes safe and happy yep yep I guess we will shall we'll, we'll sign off for this week and for the year <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh that's we'll right see you next year guys yeah <laughs> oh yeah sorry that <laughs> <laughs> this is Brittany and Bobo saying goodnight. Chrissy in Salt Lake City saying goodnight and Happy New Year. This is Hannah from Wisconsin saying good evening. This is Mitch saying goodnight from Kitchener, Ontario. Hey, I didn't screw it up this time. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Rachel. Yeah. And this is Rachel currently in South Bend, Indiana. Um, Happy holidays to everyone, whatever you celebrate, and a, have a very safe New Year's Eve uh, if you're out planning on going out and celebrating, and hope that the 2016 starts off on the right foot for you, and uh, keep building those uh, flowcharts. Listening to the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. Any and all movies, books, games, and other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied.